Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this video is titled United States Air Force T-37 Instructor Pilot Tales. This was a student cross-country that ended up with a total electrical failure at night. Now, we were going into Dias Air Force Base. We had taken off from Vance. It was night. The weather wasn't the best. It was about a 500-foot ceiling, so we're being radar vectored for a GCA, a ground control approach, where they have a radar system on the ground, and they scan the aircraft coming in, and they tell you if you're high, low, and give you corrections and stuff like that. So we did not have an ILS. Um, we had reasonably crude instrumentation back in the mid-70s. Um, and so uh, this was our precision approach to be talked down um, as we came in. And we were coming around the pattern. We're coming around on final. Uh, and we started down glide slope. We're still in the weather. Now, the T-37, and I hope they've improved it in the four-some decades since, but it had a rather, of course, it's gone now. <laughs> it's not used in training anymore. But towards the end, I hope they improved it. Anyway, uh, it had a rather crude electrical uh, voltage control system. The blue arrow here points to the two ammeters, and below that are the two generator cutoff switches. In the middle is the battery switch. Now, the voltage regulator used a stack of carbon plates, and it used a solenoid to compress the plates. And the more it compressed, the more it uh, restricted the voltage. The only problem was there was a spring involved in this, and if the spring failed, you went to full voltage uh, into the system. So we're coming down final, and all of a sudden, the cockpit lights get a bit brighter. I hear kind of a whining noise. I look down, and I see both ammeters pegged. And I key the mic, because we're still in the weather. I key the mic and said, we got a problem. And then we broke out of the weather right then at about 500 feet. And there was a muffled whoomp, and the whole cockpit went dark. Well, this was one of the advantages of side-by-side. -side. I didn't want the uh, student to assume that since things weren't going well, I was going to automatically take it. So I, I took the aircraft, uh, you know, jiggled the stick, and um, uh, continued in, and I landed on uh, the runway. Uh, Dias has a very big runway. Uh, they have C-130s there, and they have a, a SAC contingent there at times. And so I'm landing on the runway. We roll out. We come to a stop on the runway, and I tell the student, okay, get out of the aircraft. I shut the engines down. I shut down the battery and the generators, doing an emergency egress procedure. Unstrap. Had to declutch the canopy, which, since we didn't have electrical power, I had the student pull the handle. It's on his side. It uh, essentially releases the screw jack, and then I push the canopy up, and then have him release the handle. It locks in place in the open position. So I get out. I'm about 10 feet away. I look back. I see the student still in the cockpit. I see smoke coming from the front left side of the nose, uh, which is where the battery is located. And it was a very acrid white type of smoke. Now, I had gotten a whiff of this. Uh, it had filled the cockpit as we're coming down final. I had got a whiff of this and before I could go to 100% oxygen. And my throat was sore for three days. It was rather caustic. But I could see that, you know, things aren't too bad. So I, I come back to the um, cockpit on the student's side, the left-hand side there, and I see him going through the shutdown checklist. And I go, no, I wanted a, an emergency aggress here. Why don't you just forget about that? Everything's done. Unstrap, get out of the aircraft in case anything goes wrong. I kind of see it had stabilized, and we just had what probably an, an overheated uh, battery. Uh, there is a battery fire procedure and, and problem, but... Uh, things are kind of stable now. So we're out there standing on this big 300 foot wide runway at night in dark. And when I'd made the uh, radio comment that we have a problem, uh, the uh, GCA controller alerted uh, tower and, and uh, crash rescue that um, the airplane had a tower because all of a sudden we, we totally disappeared off his radar. Transponders gone. I mean, they still had the uh, the radio paint, but they had no communication with us. He could see that we had landed. But I'm looking down there, and the fire trucks are all along the runway, just sitting there with their lights flashing. Uh, nobody's moving. We're standing there looking at the fire trucks. Nobody's moving. So, okay, I get out my flashlight, 
and I start blinking it towards the closest fire truck. And that's when <laughs> they realize that we are on the ground. So they start pulling up and the lead truck pulls up in front of the nose and they have this little um, hose in the front of the nose that one of the uh, the firemen brings out and he's he's pointing it at the nose of the aircraft. It's, it's still smoking and I'm trying to talk him out of covering our aircraft with foam because I could see that we'd really be there for a long time. And finally decided that, well, it was just an overheated uh, battery and uh, things were okay. But of course, in, in the process of the whole thing, it, it took all our electrical power. And the, uh, of course, the interesting thing is if it would have happened just a short time earlier and we'd have been in the clouds uh, with absolutely no instrumentation, this isn't like, you know, modern aircraft with multiple backup systems for electrical power. This, this had, you know, very simplistic. We lost it all. It was gone. So we would have had to have bailed out of the aircraft because um, we'd have lost control having uh, no reference. So anyway, we kind of lucked out on that. And uh, Air Training Command headquarters wanted to, uh, they actually wanted to give me a safety award for it. And uh, somebody in our local group said, no, our pilots is, are good. That's just how they handle things. And so uh, that, never, uh, that never went through the system. But anyway, it was an interesting cross country. Thanks for watching.